is a demonstration of our virtual SCADA lab demo. This is done by the Fermat Lab at Virginia Tech in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. In this video, we will start by introducing supervisory control and data acquisition systems, also known as SCADA systems. We will then show our virtual SCADA infrastructure and how we designed the virtual SCADA lab. We will go on to the back-end construction of the virtual SCADA lab and then to the front-end construction and the HMI of the virtual SCADA lab. Finally, we will show a demonstration of an IEEE 9 bus power system. SCADA systems are vital components of most nations critical infrastructures. They control pipelines, water and transportation systems, chemical plants and a wide variety of manufacturing operations. SCADA provides management with real-time data on production operations and implements more efficient control paradigms and reduces the cost of co operation. These benefits are made possible by the use of standard hardware and software on SCADA systems combined with improved communication protocols. However, these benefits are acquired at the price of increased vulnerability to attacks or erroneous actions from a variety of external and internal sources. For this reason, a virtual SCADA lab would be able to simulate these attacks. A SCADA system consists of four parts. The first part are the RTUs or remote devices. These send information through a communication infrastructure to a SCADA data server which collects all of the information. This information is then displayed on a human machine interface also known as, as an HMI. Here we show the flow of information from the remote devices through the communication infrastructure to the data server and finally that information is displayed on an HMI. On our right we can see two graphs. The graph on the left is that of a voltage displayed on the 9 bus system. As you can see there is a spike in the voltage. This spike will trigger an alarm which is seen by the operator at the HMI system. Now the HMI operator can trip a fault and take corrective action for the SCADA system. Here we show our virtual SCADA infrastructure. We start with the back end. First we simulate data using data simulator engines such as PSLF or MATLAB. We then collect this information inside of a database and have an interface macro usually in designed in Visual Basic for Applications take this information and send it through a Matricon OPC server for DDE. This sends the information via a protocol called OPC to the front end. Going more into depth on the back end construction, we start with the data sensors and simulators. This simulates the remote devices that would be typically found in a SCADA infrastructure. In power systems, this would be an RTU or PMU. We simulate this using PSLF or MATLAB, which are common power system simulation tools. Then we go on to the local database. PSLF stores this information inside of a database which can be either SQL or Microsoft Excel or other common database softwares. We then use a macro in typically designed using Visual Basic for Applications to take this information and send it to a OPC server for DDE. OPC is a communication protocol used in SCADA to send information. It's important that we use OPC because this is the same protocol that is used in actual SCADA systems. This way 
we can properly simulate all aspects of a SCADA system and we can simulate attacks that could be used on SCADA systems. Here we show how Matricon OPC for DDE can be interfaced with Microsoft Excel and how tags can be added and viewed in Matricon OPC Explorer. So we have all of our information stored in Excel which serves as our database and this is linked to Matricon OPC server for DDE. We can view these tags in Matricon OPC Explorer. Here are the tags that we will use in iFix and these tags represent the voltages and phases for a 9 bus system. As you can see, you can see the voltage and phase for the 9 bus system. You can also see the power flow between different branches and between different buses. Here we have the Matricon OPC for DDE. This takes tags from the Excel spreadsheet and transmits them using the OPC protocol. We can see these tags inside of Matricon OPC Explorer. As you can see, these are the tags that display the value of the Excel spreadsheet. If we change one of the values inside of the database, for example, if we change bus 1 phase from 50 to 0, we can see this change reflected inside of the bus 1 phase tag. Here are the simulated values over a period of time for the 9 bus system. These are created in PSLF and are in imported to a database in Excel. Here, we run a macro that in increments of 1 second takes the information from the database of simulated values and plays them to the tags in Excel. These tags then send the information through the OPC server for DDE to the iFix application. Now we go into the construction of the front end of the virtual SCADA infrastructure. Previously, we were sending information over OPC to the front end from the Matricon OPC server for DDE. We receive this information in an OPC client. We then take this information from the OPC client and we store it inside of a process database. This database is local to all of the computers running the front end. Finally, an HMI displays the information from the process database. All of these are run inside of virtual machines and can be run on multiple computers. Going into more detail on the front end, we show the OPC network. In this, this is the client that is used to connect to a, any server. We can use the IP address or we can select the computer on the network that we choose to connect to. The only condition is that these networks should be running a DDE server. Next, we organize the information coming from the RTUs in the form of tags. These tags collect information from the OPC server and display that information for each RTU that it is assigned to. So, each one of these tags represents a different part of the SCADA network. We then add these tags to a process database. This process database stores all of the information from all of the tags in one place. 
This way, the HMI can link directly to different tags and display all the information from these tags in one location. As you can see, all of these tags represent a different part of a SCADA network. In the example that we use, which is a 9-bus system, these tags represent the voltage and phase of each bus. Finally, in iFix, we can show this data in the form of charts and other data representations. This information can then be used to make decisions on the system that is being used. So for example, in a power system, if a sudden spike in voltage is seen, the operator can choose to make a decision based on the data that is coming from the PMUs. Here we will show how we can interface Matricon OPC for DDE with iFix. We start by opening iFix and by opening the sample picture that we want to use. In this case, we are using the 9 bus system, which sh will display the values of the tags shown previously in Excel. You can see the, val the values of the buses, buses voltages, and buses phase in this picture. This is the HMI that we will use. In order to link this with Matricon OPC for DDE, we need to first open the database manager. This is already opened and has the tags that we are planning on using. To show how a tag is added, we first delete the bus1 phase tag and we will add it again. In order to add a tag, we first add a block. Since this is an input, we select analog input. We choose the name of the tag. In this case, we use the naming convention B1P, although any name can be used. We choose the I.O. configuration, which first establishes a connection, and then in this, you can choose the tag that is added. In order for you to be able to add a tag, you need to have the server running beforehand. Here we add the bus1 phase, which is displayed here. We first check the phase to make sure that the tag is good. As you can see, the data quality is good, and the data is being read as a zero, which is consistent with the Excel spreadsheet. Furthermore, if we change this value to a 15, we should be able to see this inside of our power tool. As you can see, the data is now being read as a 15. Here are all of the other tags. Now we have to browse and select the tag that we had just named. Now we will show how to link the database manager with the HMI that we have created. As you can see, this is the 9-bus system that we are using to see all of the data from the Excel spreadsheet to simulate a SCADA system. Now we want to add a data link for the bus 2 phase. As you can see, for all other buses, the voltages and phases have already been defined. Now we want to add the phase for the bus 2. In order to do that, we insert a object and as that object we choose a data link. We expand that and now we need to select the source for this data link. The source for this data link connects to the database manager. The database manager is called fix. We select the corresponding bus or tag name. In this case we want to select the bus2 phase. Now we need to select the name of that bus phase. 
we select a float and we select the current value of that float. This shows up as the source syntax. We select OK and now we have the value of the bus2 phase. We can rearrange this and put this above the radians to signify that this is the bus2 phase. We check this by running the picture and selecting switch to run. As you can see, all of the phases and voltages are being displayed. And over here, we have 0.12 as the phase of the bus 2. We check this by going back to our Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and seeing the value of the bus 2. Now, to check whether or not this updates, we change the bus 2 phase to 75 and see if this changes inside of our picture. As you can see, now the bus 2 phase has changed to 75 radians and shows that our Excel spreadsheet is correctly linked to Matricon OPC for DDE and correctly linked to our iFix database. Finally, we show how to run an IEEE 9 bus power system in our virtual SCADA environment. Here is a topology of the 9 bus system, and here is an additional picture that we designed for the 9 bus system. We now show how to run a picture instead of IFIX. We first start with opening the database manager and making sure that all of the values inside of the tags are running correctly. As we can see, all of the current values are being displayed. We then move to the HMI inside of IFIX and click on double click on the picture that we want to run. In this case, we wish to run Voltage Graphs 9 bus, which is being displayed here. In order to run this, we click switch to run and see the voltages that are being displayed. As you can see, all of the graphs are being updated and show the current voltage and phase of the buses involved. We can stop the picture by clicking the switch mode, which switches the environment of the workplace, and we can choose another picture to run. This time, we choose 9 bus 2 which is the 9 bus system that we were displaying earlier. We click switch to run and we can see the phases and voltages of the 9 bus system. Again, in order to stop the picture, we click switch mode and it stops running the picture.